to Discrete Mathematics Lectures. So today's going to be a little different. I'm going to give you a bit of a puzzle. Um, you might not be aware, but one of, the, one of the goals with Discrete Mathematics is to teach you some agricultural economics. Um, it's one of these strange things with all these interdisciplinary studies where they try to mash everything into one class. So here's your agricultural economics uh, studies for this, this particular class. So there's a family of farmers. And they own a farm. They have one child. They want to divide their farm up so that each child has a single contiguous plot of land bordering the plots of land of each other child in a length of fence. Whew. Well, luckily for us, this uh, agricultural economics problem is not that difficult because what we can do is we can take the farm and we give the whole farm to child number one. Not a big deal. But here's the thing. Um, farming isn't always so simple. As you might know, something that happens on the farm is animals reproduce, including humans. And that one child, through love and affection, became two children. So the, the farmer parents had another child. So now, they still want to divide up their farm so that each child has a single contiguous plot of land bordering the plots of land of each other child in a length of fence. Well, again, not so difficult. What they do is they decide that they can just take the farm and cut it in half. One, two. Whew, that was close, right? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was really worried that maybe they wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, to divide up the farm that way. But um, <clears throat> uh, here's, here's the thing. Uh, you remember Lenny? I don't know if you remember Lenny. Maybe you don't remember Lenny. But Lenny was, you know, their child that they had a long time ago that, that went off to find his fortune. Well, Lenny didn't do so hot, and Lenny's come back now. So he actually, he actually, wants, he actually wants his piece of the pie. Pie is French for farm. That's not true. So now they, now they need to divide this up for three children. Um, okay, so the first, first thing you think, you think French, Napoleon, ne Neapolitan, da, there we go. And I've got one is bordering two in a length of fence, two is bordering three in a length of fence, but this doesn't work because one doesn't border three in a length of fence, okay? So this is a non-answer. Okay, so something you might think is, oh, oh, I remember my history. V for victory. So this is one, two, three. Now here, one touches three, but only in a point. So this is, again, a non-answer. So at a fence post. So this is, again, not going to work for us. So... Okay, Europe, Europe, Europe. What's, uh, what's the only thing you think about Europe? You, you didn't know that this was also interdisciplinary European history. Um, the only other fact that anyone in the world knows about Europe is that Mercedes-Benz is from there. And Mercedes-Benz has a logo that looks like that. 
and now we have one bordering two, two bordering three, and three bordering one, all in lengths of fence. Okay, now, you might be protesting and saying things like, you know, Steve, the farm was a square, then it was a rectangle, and now it's a circle. And to that, my response is, ha ha, farm shapes, ha ha. And by that, I mean, it doesn't matter what shape the farm is, okay? Um, this is, the, the, the statement of the question does not have anything to do with the shape of the farm. And that will become even more relevant later. So, um, you may recall that, uh, that one of the children, when they were a baby, was, was captured by dragons. I don't, I don't know if you've read the backstory on, on this paragraph here, but um, yeah, there, there was actually one baby snatched up by dragons and they just figured that the baby was dead. But, but she actually, she tamed the dragons and came back. Um, and now that she is the queen of the dragons, she's like, hey, you know, given that I'm queen of the dragons, could I have, like, you know, some of the family farm? And while the, the rest of the family was not super excited to share their, their gigantic farm, she does have dragons. So they were like, yeah, oh, uh, of course, of, of course, um, queen of the dragons, yes. So now they have, um, they have four kids. Uh... Yeah, so that's cool. Um, if we if we try to extend this, you know, you might you might just do this one, two, three, four. But you see pretty quickly this doesn't work because one only touches four in a point, two only touches three in a point, so that's not going to work. Um, you might you might try uh, you know something like that. That's obviously not going to work. So so we probably want to start with you know, sort of start with the Mercedes-Benz idea and then just have the farmers like annex a piece over here. Maybe maybe they annex this piece. Uh, I mean, they've got dragons for goodness sake, but but that's, that's not quite gonna work, but maybe they just keep annexing. So four goes on ahead and annexes all the way around here. And now let me redraw this shape and we're gonna have one, two, three, separated Mercedes-Benz style. And then four is just this other kind of piece around here. Luckily, the pen doesn't want to write right here. That's good. Okay, so now this is a beautiful, for those of you that aren't experts on agricultural economics, this is a beautiful farm shape. This is, this is called the four-child farm shape. That's a scientific term from that don't let anyone in the ag school see this video. I will probably be shot. Uh, and it would be justifiable homicide. Okay, so we got one bordering two, one bordering three, one bordering four. Again, one borders two in this length of fence, one borders three in this length of fence, one borders four in that length of fence. So one's check, taken care of. Two borders three in this length of fence, two borders four in this length of fence, and finally three borders four in this length of fence. So we're good. Oh, whew. crisis averted. Last thing we want is an angry dragon queen. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know about you, but I was I was really worried. Um, you know, as an educator, this is kind of an easy uh, classroom topic because all I have to do is keep uh, coming up with short fictional vignettes, and I can ratchet up the difficulty of the problem. Uh, yeah, there was another child came back from the Blood Space Wars. They didn't think that that child would survive, but that child did survive. Um, you go on ahead and solve this problem. I'm. I'm gonna go outside, hang out with my puppies. There we go. Let's see. Here's puppy number one. Here's puppy number two. Oh, yes. Aren't you a cutie? You are a cutie. This is Taco. This is where, oh, oof. All right. Oh, good, good. Well, that's, that's good. We had our nice little break. Um, where were we? Ah, yes, five. Have you sorted out five yet? Hopefully you've sorted out five. Um, 
but tell you what, if, if you think you've sorted out five, I would ask that you um, maybe write it down, take a break, come back to it a little later and check it for yourself. If you're pretty confident that it works, maybe take a picture of it and send it to another classmate. Um, you know, before you get too confident. And then just a little, another little addendum. If you don't think it's possible, I want you to think about in your future life, when you've got a job, if a supervisor comes to you and asks you to do something and you don't think it's possible, can you just say, Supervisor, that's not possible. Or can you say, Supervisor, I can't figure that out, therefore it's not possible. Or, should you maybe try to come up with a proof? Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye.